So just starting by lying down onto the reformer, make sure that you're centered and just doing a quick warm up here. So you're going to have your feet hip distance apart and you're going to extend the legs out nice and smooth. Press out through your heels or through midfoot. So mainly looking to feel this a bit in your quads. While at the same time just keep your lower back down on the carriage nice and relaxed. Shoulders, neck, remain relaxed. And you're breathing out to push, breathing in as you release. You should start to feel a wee bit of heat coming into your legs, especially your thighs. And a little bit of squeezing around your glutes. Just come in to halfway and just pulse it in that position. Just get the quads fired up a wee bit more. And shake the legs out. So next exercise, slightly more difficult. You're going to raise one leg into tabletop. And you're going to press all the way out and all the way back in. Again, just keep the movement smooth. If you find this resistance is a bit heavy, you can drop a spring off. But ideally, try and stay on all springs. just into halfway and just give it some wee pulses get that bit more squeeze out of that quad and then starting on the opposite leg so the leg that's in tabletop here should remain really stable opposite leg extending all the way out as you breathe out breathing in as you release again same as the first exercises here you're trying to keep neck shoulders Lower back, just nice and relaxed on the carriage. Only tension you're feeling here is in that right leg at the moment. And just into your pulses. Again, just give the legs a quick shake out, quick rest for a second. Now, bring your heels together, toes apart, and then extend. So as you push away this time, your feet are in a V shape. You're going to squeeze your heels nice and tight together. This is just going to warm up the inside of the legs a bit. I'm only just doing about 10 of these here. So it's just a quick warm up just to get ready for the class. And then some pulses. Keep squeezing your heels tight together as you pulse. I'm just sitting up to change the spring, so I'm dropping down to a red and a blue. We're doing bridging next, so the lighter the springs are, the more difficult this is going to be into the backs of your legs. So if you find as you're doing these bridge exercises that you're starting to cramp into your hamstrings or backs of your legs, then you're just not quite ready for the lighter weight, so you can just put it, make it slightly heavier. It'll give you a bit more support. So you're picking your spine bit by bit up off the carriage. You're raising your hips up nice and high. When you're at the top, there should pretty much be a straight line from your knees through your hips into your shoulders. And then you roll down piece by piece, nice and smooth. The idea here is you're lifting one vertebra off at a time and you're letting one vertebra at a time roll back down. Now, from here, I'm going to do a leg pull. So I'm going to let my left leg straighten, and then I'm going to let it lower down. Now, I'm consciously thinking about really squeezing my right glute to keep my pelvis and lower back nice and stable. So I just do three of those leg lowers and then switch over so left side here is nice and solid 
as I drop my right leg and then pull back up. Left glute's working hard here to keep me in that position. And I'm also working a bit onto my core. It's stopping my pelvis from twisting as my leg lowers and lifts. And then just let your spine melt all the way back down onto the couch. Now your feet are about hip distance apart. Take your right leg into tabletop and these are more like little pumps up. So it's just a single leg bridge. As soon as your bum touches the carriage, you squeeze and you pump up. So you're really working onto the backs of the legs here. Left glutes working hard, left hamstrings working hard. As soon as your butt hits, drive up. So you're working slightly more on explosive power to the backs of your legs. And then over to the opposite side. I'm going to try and get the exact same feeling on your right leg as you had on your left leg here. Don't allow your body to twist. We're really squeezing into hamstring, squeezing into glute. And then resting your feet down. Okay, so changing springs again. This time I'm going on to two reds and a yellow. Just gonna do a quick wee bit of mobility here around the backs of the legs, and then I'm gonna move into some spine curls. So it's just a quick set here. Working here on just raising your legs up, ideally until they're straight up towards the ceiling. Make sure your tailbone remains on the carriage, and then you're squeezing down nice and smooth. So you don't want your bum lifting up in the air when you get to the top there. You're just trying to create length down through the backs of the legs. As you squeeze down, you're just lowering your legs to the point where you feel your back wants to arch, but you're not letting your back arch. Your feet shouldn't be going down anywhere near the springs here. Now into a spine curl. So you rise up and really rise your heels up towards the ceiling. Curl into a ball so knees go towards your ears. And then you're going to melt your spine down just piece by piece until your tailbone rests on the carriage. Push through the legs and start again. So legs float up first of all, then shoot right up nice and high. Get your heels up towards the ceiling. Folding down now, resting your knees towards your ears. And then just rolling your spine down piece by piece. And you're just pulling through that resistance. And then push the legs back out again. So shoot up as high as you can up towards the ceiling here, really lengthen. Then fold in. And then again, you're just letting that spine roll down nice and slow. Okay, so we're going to take your feet out of the straps now. You're going to place those longer straps back onto the poles. For this, I am on a red and a yellow. So I'm just going to sit up nice and tall. Legs are in between the two shoulder rests facing the back of the machine. I'm just warming up my upper body now. So I'm squeezing back here, trying to maintain a nice tall spine. Nice relaxed shoulders down away from my ears. A nice tall neck position. So you're going to squeeze back here. Any feeling this in between your shoulder blades. You're going to feel it a bit into your triceps as well on the backs of your arms. If you find that's a bit heavy, just go down to a red or a blue is easier again. Now, coming into more of a bicep curl position, I'm also going to go into a rollback. So, in the rollback position, I'm just working my abdominals a bit. Arms nice and straight out in front of you, and then you're just pulling towards you. Hands coming towards your shoulders. Bit of squeeze into your core, keeps you in that position. You're going to feel this down the front of your arms, maybe into the tops of your shoulders a wee bit. Try and keep looking just straight ahead. Try not to force your chin towards your chest. Now pop your longer straps back down onto the poles. And 
Now, I've changed down to a blue spring here. You can do this on a blue or a yellow. It doesn't make a massive difference. So toes on the bar. Make sure you're sitting close to the front edge of the carriage. You don't want to be too far back. Otherwise, when you go into a rollback position, you're going to be lying on the shoulder rest. So I'm just starting off with 20 wee tiny, tiny jumps. I'm just tapping my toes off the bar. I'm looking straight ahead and I'm keeping plenty of squeeze into my abdominals. Once you've 20 done, you go into your hundreds beats. So you're breathing in for five beats, squeezing your core, breathing out for five beats. Keep your focus on your abdominals. Keep your focus on your breathing. Get plenty of squeeze into the core. The longer you're doing this, the more it should start to burn in your abs. Keep concentrating on where you're feeling it. Bring your focus onto your abdominals. Try not to tense the shoulders up and keep looking straight ahead. And relax. So if you just pop your feet down onto the plate and then pop your hands on the bar, just try and extend your legs out here, just get a bit of stretch. If you can get your legs straight, then brilliant. But just trying to feel that down through the backs of your legs. Some of these are going to feel this in your spine a bit, even up around your shoulder blades. Now, pop your feet back up onto the bar, close to your toes. Extend the legs out straight. Go into your rollback position again. And we're going to just do some rotations here. So just helping your oblique muscles fire. So you're going to rotate around to the left, first of all. And then squeeze back to center. So just nice smooth controlled motion here. As you reach to one side, you're going to turn your head. You're always going to watch that hand as you move. Right, just to make it a bit more challenging, try raising your arms up towards the ceiling. Pretty much bicep touching ears. And then relax. So you're going to keep your feet higher this time as you stretch. So you're just going to push away, try and extend those legs out nice and straight. Keep holding tight onto the bar. If you don't have a good grip of the bar, you're going to lose a lot of stretch. I've changed down here to a uh, blue spring. Now you can do this exercise on either a red, a blue, or a yellow. So red is going to give you a bit more of a heavy feeling. Blue is medium, yellow is very light. A lot of people would find yellow more difficult. Others will find the heavy more difficult. So we're just working on standing glutes here. So you start off in a nice tall position. Ideally, with your left foot, your toes are roughly underneath the wee black ball. Right knees up off the carriage. And your weight here is pushing down into the middle of your left foot into the floor. You almost want to feel like you're squashing around into the floor as your right leg extends back and then releases. Consciously feeling like you're squeezing here into your left glute. So your standing leg is the leg that's gonna require the most effort. Now, keep your right leg out behind you, and this time you're going to lunge. So you're going to sit towards the floor, using your left leg. And as you push back up, really feel like you're driving your heel or your midfoot into the floor. And feel like you're almost trying to bore a hole into the floor as you push back up. It's going to help activate that left glute even more. Really concentrate where you're feeling the exercise here. Now reaching both arms out in front, you're going to try and stay nice and low. Rotate way around to the left and then back to center. Then right and center. Now, hands just rest across your chest. You're going to try now to raise your heel up nice and high. 
and then set it back down onto the floor. After your body stays nice and stable as you do that, I'm just bringing my body with slightly further forward and now I'm going to tap my heel. I'm trying to feel like I'm banging the floor quite hard here with my heel, but I'm only lifting my heel a centimetre up off the floor. My body with even further forwards and then just pulsing that back leg just to get a wee bit more squeeze into that glute. So left glute should be starting to really burn now. Now I'm going to change now to a heavy spring so I'm going to go to a red and I'm just going to do some explosive kicks here. It's just a bit of a different feeling in the glute. It's going to challenge it a bit differently. Same start position so weight into the midfoot and then really explosively kick back with your right leg. Try and stop and hold for a second and then release slow. So you're going to do 10 kicks really explosive back, hold nice and slow in. Notice my left leg's not moving at all. Trying to create stability through that left glute. Once you got those 10 kicks done that you finished, so you're just going to stretch that left glute out now. So if you stand facing the reformer at the side, your left foot will go across to the far shoulder rest, and then step your right leg way back. Then you're trying to just fold your upper body down onto your left shin. You should be feeling the stretch into your left glute, left hip area. You don't want to feel any pressure build up in your left knee. You just have to change your angles if you are getting any pressure in the wrong areas. Now change your spring back to what you started on on the other side and just bring your mat across to the opposite side. So you're just doing the same routine on the other side now. So get your setup position right at the start, stand up tall. Toes roughly underneath the black ball. And then you're in a slight squatted position in your right leg. Your weight's pushing down onto the floor onto your midfoot. It's okay to be on your heel, but you don't want to feel too much weight going into your toes here. And then keeping your right leg nice and steady, you're just pushing back with the left leg. And then you're releasing it back in nice and controlled. Upper body and right leg should be statue still. Only part of your body here that's moving is that left leg. Again, the effort here throughout is trying to get that right glute to work as hard as you can. Now moving into the lunge. So you're sinking towards the floor. And as you push up, really feel like you're squashing an orange underneath the middle of your right foot here. So plenty of squeeze now into that right glute area. Nice. Sit down low and then rotate round to the right. Just letting your upper body turn and left. Okay, so when you get back to the center, just hands across your chest. You're just going to raise your heel up nice and high here and then set it back down onto the floor. It's just a nice smooth motion, first of all. Then you can put slightly more weight forwards and then tapping your heel off the floor. So you do want to feel like you're banging the floor quite hard with your heel. And you kind of want to do this quite quickly. And then weight further forwards, pulse that back leg for a moment. Okay, now change back to the heavy spring. So you have a red spring on here. Left foot against your shoulder rest. Back into your sprinter position. An explosive kick back with that left leg. Nice and controlled on the way back in. So right leg and upper body here remain really steady. And as you kick back with your left leg, you get a nice squeeze into that right glute, which stabilizes things. So you're just doing 10 kicks here, nice and explosive back, but nice and controlled in. Okay, 
once you're completed, just go, again, just go into that stretch. So your right leg crosses in front of you. Right foot should be roughly resting against the far shoulder rest. And then try and get your left leg as far back as you can behind you and as straight behind you as you can. And then you're just dropping your chest down towards that right shin a bit. So again, looking to feel that stretch there into your right hip, right glute area. Change here to a red spring. So I'm working a bit now on balance, stability, and also working on uh, upper body. So I've got my left foot resting against the shoulder rest, or sorry, in between the shoulder rest and on the headrest. And then I'm working on just squeezing my right arm back, trying to maintain a nice tall posture. As I squeeze back here, my balance is being challenged quite a bit. The idea here is that you engage through your core. It creates more stability for your body. And then you're just working on squeezing lots into the back of that arm. Squeeze back now and just hold. Create lots of squeeze into the back of that right arm. And relax, okay? Now you're just gonna switch sides. You might find that you're better on one side than the other. So again, try and get up into a nice tall position in your upper body. Your step forwards with your right foot and then you're squeezing back with your left arm. Focusing a bit on posture here. Keep the neck nice and tall and try and focus on something ahead of you. So you're looking straight in front. Okay, so when you give it a squeeze back this time, just hold. Then just squeeze into that left tricep area. Perfect, and relax. Now, we're gonna go into a reverse elephant from here. So, feet are just resting down onto the foot plate. You're gonna lift out into a plank position. Just holding the side of the carriage. Now your aim here is to just reach those arms forwards without altering anywhere else in the rest of your body. So as my arms reach forwards, I'm not compensating by letting my back arch. I'm really feeling like I'm pulling my rib cage in here, trying to get my core working nice and hard. Next, then in line with your spine. You're not letting your chin drop towards the floor, getting into a bad position with your neck. Get a bit of squeeze into your glutes here. The further out you reach, the more you're going to be challenged. So if you are reaching out quite a bit and you're feeling a bit of pressure in your back, just rein it in a wee bit. You should feel this all in your abdominals. Just keep the movement nice and slow and smooth as well. Now next exercise, you want to be kneeling here so you are not touching the shoulder rest. You're just a couple inches away. I'm going to do what's called a thigh stretch. You're going to pop your hands beside your hips and then you're going to hinge back from your knees here. So as you move back, you're creating lots of length in your quads, but you're also having to contract your quads and contract your core and your glutes all at the same time 
pull you back up nice and smooth. So the idea is from your knees through your hips, right up through your spine and shoulders, everything stays stable. So you're gonna feel this quite a bit on the thighs. You should hopefully feel it into your abs. And I want you feeling like you're really squeezing into your glutes as you do that as well. Okay, turning around now to face the bar. You have the option here if you're using sticky mats for a bit of grip on the bar. And I'm changing down to a yellow spring. Now, yellow's quite light, which is going to make this exercise quite difficult on my abdominals. It's easier to do this on a blue, it's easier again to do it on a red. If you want to go extra hard, you can do it on no spring. You've got to make sure here that you've always got complete control over that carriage and spring. That when you go out, you can control yourself back in smooth. You don't have to cheat to pull yourself back in. So aim here is keep the hips forward. Arms really, really straight. Try not to grip the bar. So your hands are just rest on top of the bar. And as you go out here, it's nice and smooth. And then you're really squeezing through your core. And it's your abdominals here that's pulling you back in. So you should have felt that pretty much from the top of your abs right down to the base of your tummy. So after doing that, just have a quick shell stretch. Just let everything relax for a moment. Now, for the next exercise, I'm changing to red spring. So again, hands are resting on the bar, feet against the shoulder rest. I'm going to lift up now into a press up position. Now, this is a full elephant. Again, very much like the baby elephant techniques, really important here. So, you're trying not to lose that position of your spine. You're trying to challenge it by reaching out. When you get out, you're trying not to let your back arch. You're trying not to let your chin start dropping towards the floor, losing that neck position. Really feel like you're keeping that rib cage pulled in, which is going to keep those abdominals really active. Breathe in to reach away. And then breathing out as you squeeze and draw back in. Red spring is perfect for that exercise, but if you felt that was quite easy, you can try it on a blue as well. Makes it a bit more difficult. No. Staying on the red spring for me, we're just working on shoulders here. If you find this a bit heavy, change down to a blue. Or if you're finding this is easy, change and knock on an extra yellow. So starting with your arms down by your side, this is going to challenge your balance. So you just have to be that wee bit careful on the first couple, just until you kind of get your balance. Arms stay really straight. Your start position is just by your hips, and your finished position is reaching straight in front of you, no higher than shoulder height. Now, as you're reaching your arms forwards and upwards here, you're trying not to let your shoulders elevate towards your ears. So feel like your shoulders stay pretty much the same distance away from your ears throughout. Now moving into a tea tray. So you're letting your elbows just rest in by your side, like you're holding a tray in your hands, and then you're pushing forwards just nice and smooth. As you do this, you should start to get a wee bit of burning around your shoulders. Upper body starting to work a good bit harder now. So 
As you push out here, try not to feel like you're losing that chin position or neck position. Just give the shoulders a quick roll and then we're going to go into what's called ballet arms. So you're going to open your arms out to the side, roughly about chest height, slightly lower is fine. Your elbows are soft and then you're just reaching forwards and you're just touching your fingertips in the center and then open them back out again. I'm going to feel this in the shoulders but across the chest. And now we're going to move into a little bit of triceps. So you're going to have your elbows just at the side of your head, hands just resting behind your head to start, and then you're pushing up towards the ceiling. Now keep your elbows nice and tucked in towards your head. You don't want to feel like they're kind of pointing out to the side too much. Now as you're doing this, it's okay that your back is going to slightly arch. You still want to feel Consciously feel like you're really pulling your ribcage in here, not allowing your ribs to feel like they're really doming forwards. So you are working your abdominals. You're going to feel this a bit in your thighs. Just trying to target those triceps as well. Okay, now when you're done, just place your longer straps onto the poles. Take one off the mats and you're going to set it just kind of in between or resting against the shoulder rest. You're going to step onto that mat with your left foot. You've got to be very careful with this part. So when you're popping your right foot onto the bar, you've got to make sure that you're looking at the bar. Because if you miss the bar, you're going to fall off the machine. Now, aim here is to push that carriage as far forwards as you can. Ideally, you're looking to touch the far end. Just depends how long your legs are and how flexible you are. So you should be getting a nice big stretch up through the back of that left leg. You're probably going to feel it a bit on the front of the right thigh as well, up towards your hip flexor. Now moving into the next stretch, try and bring that carriage all the way in. Try and finish with that left leg nice and straight. Then your aim is to try and your upper body to rest down more. And then press all the way back out again. So again, you're trying to get that carriage to touch the far end here. You're really reaching out. Find a position that's comfortable for your hands. You don't have to hold on to the shoulder rest. You can pop your hands on the carriage if it feels like it's more secure. Move the carriage all the way back in again. Try and finish with your left leg nice and straight. Now, if you can, try and raise your right leg upwards, away from the bar, keeping your left leg nice and straight. And then just let your upper body again feel like it's just resting down. Okay, and relax. So if you pop your right foot now onto that mat, left foot up on the bar and starting again on the other side. So push as far forwards as you can. And you may feel that one side move slightly freer than the other. And then moving that carriage all the way in, try and finish with that right leg nice and straight or as straight as you can get it. Let your upper body then start to rest down more. As you're stretching, just breathe nice and relaxed. Don't be holding your breath. And again, just push forwards here. Try and create as much length forwards as you can.
Now bring that carriage all the way back in again. Try and keep that right leg straight and then see if you can just raise and elevate that left leg up towards the ceiling. Let your upper body slightly fold forwards more if you can. Creating lots of length down through the back of that right leg. Right, and relax. Now, for me, I'm gonna stay on a red spring. Most people would do this on a slightly lighter spring, so a blue. Um, I'm going to take both off the mats. I'm going to place them about three quarters of the way along the rails. Now, we're working on four point needle and abs here. So hands are just resting onto the mats, knees against the shoulder rest. I'm on four point kneeling and I'm just doing wee knee tucks. So my knees are coming in towards my hands. So that carriage just about taps my wrist and then I release. My whole body isn't swaying back and forwards here. My hands, my shoulders, my head, my upper body don't really move very much at all. As I tuck in here, my abdominals are shortening quite a bit. and I'm getting them really active. And then I'm lengthening my abdominals as I release my knees away. And your last one, just tuck in and just hold and really, really squeeze your abdominals. Try and hold for about 10 seconds. Okay, so now just have a quick shell stretch. If you find that quite heavy, just change down to a blue spring. Next exercise is slightly more difficult. So same start position. And again, you wanna pull your body forward. So pretty much your shoulders are directly above your hands. Now you're gonna lift your knees up slightly, so you're now, your knees are still against the shoulder rests, they're just not resting down on the carriage. So you can pull those shoulder rests with you. You've got a bit more weight now going through your shoulders, and you're gonna make those abdominals work a wee bit harder. So really squeezing in. Really, really focus on where you're feeling this exercise. Concentrate on getting your abdominals to squeeze and shorten as much as you can when you tuck in. And holding on that last one. Now, when you're finished that, just take those mats again. And then I pop those mats back down. One is going to sit on the carriage, one on the plate. Now, you're going to take the foot bar and you're going to drop it all the way down to the floor. And we're going to change here to a blue spring. So you're going to stand here on the foot plate. Do be very careful with this exercise, especially if you haven't done it before in a class scenario, because it is going to challenge your balance a lot. So you're going to start with your left foot forwards. The most important part of this exercise is getting your right foot in the correct position. So if you really raise your heel up nice and high, you're going to be able to move nice and freely. If your heel is too low, you're not going to be able to move very far. You're not really going to get much out of the exercise. So by keeping your right heel elevated up nice and high and being on the ball of your right foot, it's going to allow you to move into a lunge position. So you're just sinking your right knee towards the springs. And as you push back up, really squeeze into your thighs. Get a bit of squeeze into that left glute as well. Just trying to really stay balanced here. So this exercise is going to challenge your stability quite a bit. Right, reach your arms forward, just be very careful as you rotate. So you're going to rotate once to the left and then once to the right, just do it nice and slow and carefully. If you do get a wee bit of a wobble, just try and get yourself set again. Now just to finish, you're gonna push your left leg away. The rest of your body stays really stable. You're trying to basically touch the end with the carriage. 
just doing three of those and then come all the way back in I just have a wee rest in between so step off give the legs a wee shake and then step back up again so again you're going to get that left heel now nice and high so you're resting on the ball of your foot on your left foot your right foot's forwards and you're just dropping down into a lunge position here so you're pushing the carriage away as you push it away your left knee starts to rest down towards the springs you're getting a bit of squeeze into your thighs squeeze into that right glute to push up okay, and it's normal here to feel quite a bit of challenge on your balance so just really focus on this exercise Okay, now sit into a nice low lunge here. You're going to take your arms in front and rotate way around to the right, back to center, and left, and center. Now, just trying to extend your right leg out now, all the way out if you can, and then controlled. And do you want to feel like your legs are working quite hard at this point? Do you want to get a wee bit of a burn in the legs? Okay, and then just stepping off again now. Okay, so you're going to pop your mats on top of each other again. Now we're going into side planks here, so you definitely want to have some cushion underneath your elbow and forearm. Now. Always have your top leg forwards, extend all the way out into a side plank. And you're going to start off here with just three thread unders. It's just nice and smooth. Thread and under, reaching up towards the ceiling. Now, you're going to do 20 wee pulses here, squeezing into your waist. Just pulsing up towards the ceiling. Really feeling like you're pulling your waist in. So that bottom waist should start to... Feel like it's working quite hard here getting towards burning once you've 20 done just do another two thread unders and 10 more pulses my waist should be starting to work really hard at this point once you've 10 pulses done bend those knees in as far as you can and push right out so you're aiming for three of those When you extend out now you're going to thread under and you're going to stay under now you're going to start to lift your hips a wee bit higher you're going to squeeze and shorten that waist more and more and more get lots of squeeze just before you finish Perfect. and then just have a quick shell stretch before we do the opposite side So get your elbow nice and secure, right foot forwards this time. So again, it's always your top leg that's the forward leg. Your feet are against the shoulder rest, lift up into a side plank position. Start with your arm up towards the ceiling and just thread under and reach up. Just nice and smooth. When you get to the top, 20 wee pulses here. As you're pulsing, you're really squeezing into that left waist. And then back to your thread under. So just two thread unders here. And then follow that up with another 10 small pulses. So starting to really fire up that waist area. Now bend in your knees right in. And then push away. So you're aiming for three of these. Now once you got extended out, just thread under, raise your hips a bit higher, squeeze your waist and shorten your waist even more. And relax. Okay, 
Let's just have a quick shell stretch again. Should have felt the abdominals or the side of your abdominals working quite hard throughout those side planks. Just going to do a wee bit of standing side splits, focusing only on inner thighs. I've dropped down here so I'm on no spring. Now you can do this on a yellow spring for more support. No spring is quite difficult. So if you haven't done it in a while, or you've never done no springs, just stick with one yellow. Or if you find a yellow is too difficult, go to a blue spring. If you're doing it on no spring, just be extra cautious. You don't want to open up too far. So your first one or two reps, you're just getting a feel for it. Making sure that you're able to control that carriage back in again. My aim here is keep even pressure through both feet. Don't start putting all your weight onto your right leg. You're only doing five here. And it's nice and slow and controlled. On that way back in again, lots of squeeze into the inside of the legs. Perfect. And then round to the opposite side. Just make sure you always step up on the solid part first. And again, just open nice and slowly. Press down, squeeze and draw all the way back in. Again, just get the inside of those legs working. Get a bit of squeeze into your glutes as well to facilitate pulling back in. When you step off, just make sure you step off the movable part first, and it's always easier to step backwards. Now just grab for the box. I'm going to set the box on long ways. We're just going to do a wee bit of work now on moving your spine. So we're going to be folding over the box here. You can lift the bar up. And you want to put on a spring that's probably just a red is perfect. You don't want this too light because the carriage will move too easily. You don't want it too heavy because you do want to be able to move the carriage back a wee bit so you can get sitting in the right position on the box. So a red spring should be just perfect. I'm going to be sitting near the front edge of the box, not quite right at the edge. Now when you roll all the way back down onto the box, you want to be resting in between your shoulder blades here. It's at the edge of the box. And then just let your head and neck fall back. And just reach back so you're getting a nice compression stretch into your thoracic spine. And on the way back up, start with the arms, follow with your head. And then you're just squeezing into your core here as you slowly sit back up nice and tall. Just adjust your position each time, so you're only really moving about an inch. And then roll back again. So just tuck under, nice and smooth. And then just extend over the reformer. Again, just reach back for that bit of added stretch. If you find that's uncomfortable, you don't have to reach back. My arms up. Head up and then squeeze all the way back. Okay, just one more time. Change positions again and just rolling that spine all the way down. So it's nice and controlled all the way back. Extend over the end of the box and then just reach them back. And then 
arms up, head up, and then just squeezing into those abdominals as you pull yourself back up nice and smooth. We're just going to drop the bar down a bit. We're going to be lying face down on the box, chest over the edge of the box here. We're going to be working on a bit of spinal extension here. So hands are going to go into the short straps, arms straight down towards the floor. And then from here, I'm just squeezing my arms back to my hips. And from this position, I'm going to keep my elbows tucked in by my side. And I'm going to work my triceps. As I straighten my arms, I'm just lifting my chest up a tiny wee bit further each time. My back extensor muscles are switched on. I've got a bit of squeeze into my glutes. That's just holding the weight of my legs. And my neck here stays in line with my spine. Really important here, you don't look forwards. You're always looking just down at the floor. That keeps your neck in a good position. Now, as you're getting into the exercise, start to feel like you're lifting that bit higher. Chest is going a bit higher. You can add in raising your legs up a bit as well. Okay, and relax. Now, for the next exercise, you're going to switch down to just a blue spring. And you're going to be very careful this exercise. So we're working on stability. So your right hand's going to go into the Shorter strap, your hands just touching the outside of the box. Your first three movements are quite simple. You're just squeezing your right arm back to your right hip. This is going to feel fairly easy. This is just preparing you for the next part. Just nice and smooth, squeeze it back. Nice and smooth, release down. Now this is where it gets quite tricky. So you're going to extend your opposite leg behind you. So your left leg goes back. And then it's just nice and smooth. Squeeze your right arm back to your right hip. Okay, and you're just aiming here for three. It's normal to feel a few wobbles as you do this. Just try and keep the movement as smooth as you can. Once you've got those three done, you're going to start on the opposite side. So left hand into the short strap. And just trying to maintain a good strong position in four point kneeling, not letting your back arch, not letting your chin drop towards the floor and getting into a bad position with your neck. That left arm stays nice and straight as you squeeze it back. Once you've got your three prep ones done, extend your right leg out behind you and then squeeze back with that left arm. And if you haven't done this exercise before, you're going to find this really tricky. Just try and keep it as smooth as you can. Okay, so that's you now finished with the box. And we're going to do some lying down abdominal work now. So you have a choice here. Red is standard. If you want to work that bit harder, stick on a red and a yellow. So you're going to take a lie down onto your back. Make sure you're not too close to the shoulder rests. And then you're going to pop your hands into the shorter straps. Okay, now arms are straight up towards the ceiling. And then float your legs up into a tabletop position. So you're going to start off with a basic ab prep exercise. So you're just coming up into a basic crunch movement. You're pulling your arms down. And then you're lifting your head and chest up with it. So you're really shortening your upper abdominals. Trying to engage upper abs mainly. You shouldn't be getting any tension in your neck and this so just make sure that you're concentrating on where you're feeling it. Get those upper abs squeezing. Now, 
by extending your legs out onto a double leg stretch you're going to start to feel your lower abdominals firing as well so just nice and smooth always come back to tabletop and you're coming up and you're extending those legs out nice and straight so you're going to feel this a bit more challenging rest for a second arms out to the side let your knees fall down to your right hand side let your heads turn to the left and switch it over and again arms up towards the ceiling Legs are going to start in tabletop and then you're going to extend your left leg straight. Now you're coming up into an oblique movement, coming up and over that right leg. Your left leg is going to stay nice and straight throughout. Your left shoulder is going to pick up nice and high, moving across in a diagonal. You're aiming here to do 10 times up over that right leg. Really squeezing into those obliques. You should be starting to feel the abs really heat up here. Now once you're up on that last one, try and straighten your right leg up towards the ceiling and do 10 wee pulses up over that right leg. So you're really working across that oblique. Get a nice burn. So you're going to have a quick wee rest before you do the opposite side. And then when you're ready, just arms up again. Then legs will come up onto tabletop. Straighten out your right leg. And then again, you're just moving across in a diagonal to your left leg. One arm fits inside your leg, the other one on the outside of your leg. And you're just aiming for 10 here. Right shoulder moving across in a diagonal. So you're moving right ribcage towards left hip, shortening that oblique. And getting plenty of squeeze in your abs. last one hold it up try and straighten your left leg towards the ceiling 10 wee pulses now trying to get as much squeeze in those abs as you can and relax okay so just a quick rotation stretch again on either side arms wide let your knees fall one way and switching it over Arms back up again. Now you're going to try and target your lower abdominals a wee bit more. So with your legs in tabletop, pull your arms down by your side. Just sinking your legs down. And then you're going to do a wee tuck up. So you're basically lifting your bum up into the air. So what's actually happening here is when you pull your legs back up, you're shortening your lower abdominals and you're, as you tuck your pelvis towards your ribcage. You're trying to really focus on squeezing into those abdominals as you lift and pick your butt up off the carriage. Try not to tense your shoulders or round your shoulders forwards as you do this exercise. So the more you rest your shoulders down, the more you have to really squeeze into your abdominals to pull up. Now keeping your head and chest up for the last part, lift your bum up and really squeeze, shorten those abs and tighten them as hard as you can. Trying to hold for five to 10 seconds and then relax. So longer straps, rest them back down onto the poles. And you're gonna go into a mermaid stretch. So for the mermaid stretch, just a red spring is perfect. You're pushing that carriage away and then you're reaching up and over with your left arm. Then you're going to rotate. Both hands are going onto the bar. As you push away, try not to lift your bum up in the air on that left hand side. Try 
try and keep it resting down on the carriage. And then come up tall, pushing your chest forwards. I do the arms nice and straight and carriage pulls all the way in. And then just push all the way back out again. Right, as you come up, take your left hand off, rest it on the shoulder rest. Take your right arm and stretch up nice and high. Lengthen across towards the side. Then both hands onto both shoulder rests. Rotate as far as you can to your left first of all. And then you can add in just reaching that left arm further back. Okay, now turn into the opposite side, right chin against the shoulder rest, left hand on the bar, and just push. So you're stretching up and over with your right arm, then rotating both hands now are on the bar, you're extending away. Again, make sure your right butt cheek stays down. And then come all the way up tall, chest forwards, shoulders relaxed down, carriage all the way in if you can with your arms straight. And extend all the way back out. As you come back up, right hand rests onto the shoulder rest. Stretch up nice and high with your left arm as you lean across. Both hands onto the shoulder rest, rotate to your right. Reach way back with your right hand now. And relax. And that is your class all finished. Good work.